Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Hing and today we'll be talking about our predictions for the Wars Champions going into patch 11.16. While there are a ton of buffs and nerfs each patch, it can be pretty difficult to actually know what's going to change. And what's going to stay the same? Sometimes a seemingly huge nerf really just brings a god tier champion down to the S tier and there's still plenty OP. Other times what seems like a minor 2 AD base reduction just causes a champion to drop off the rift. So we're here to steer you away from what we think are going to be the worst champions in each role this patch. We'll be starting off things by talking about Uction. We usually go role by role listing the two worst champions in each one, but for Uction, we have to make an exception. For one, people are playing him in multiple roles, mainly mid and bot lane, with top trailing quite far behind as his third most popular role. And he's doing extremely bad in all three. His kit itself isn't inherently bad, I mean he has mobility, a potentially infinite camouflage, a massive long range execute, and can revive teammates. That just screams OP, but Riot themselves said that he was specifically designed to have an OP kit, but to have lower damage output compared to the other marksmen to counterbalance it. The thing is, it doesn't just counterbalance it, his damage is so low that it completely outweighs how strong his kit mechanically is, and he's basically useless. Usually bot ADCs are often scared of just being soloed by any champion, and they can get ran over. But I've seen mid lane auctions, even fed ones, go to gank an ADC and just end up giving over a kill while doing approximately none of the other marksman's HP. Now, there's one thing a lot of people are gonna say he's a new champion and people just have to learn him. I don't need to be taught that philosophy, as I've always preached it myself. But in this case, auction definitely needs some buffs to actually be good. You might say, oh, but X, Y, or Z player builds this and does that and it works. But when a champion's win rate across all roles varies from the low 40s all the way down to the 20s, yes, some people play them in even the jungle, there's no doubt that the champion is not as good as is. Though personally, I do have a lot of fun with him and sometimes I win quite often. But maybe I'm just lucky. You know, I've been playing those games where I get really fed and I just do less than the other ADC with just two items. Again, his kit itself is bad. Just wait to play him until he sees some buffs. Avoiding the champions on this list is a good starting point to rank up, but if you're actually serious about climbing, you should definitely check out ProGuides.com. We have courses from all your favorite streamers and pros like CoreJJ, Aphromoo, and X Smithy to help you really understand how to play your role. And if you want a more personalized one-on-one -on -one experience, our top tier coaches are available 24-7 to help you anytime that you want it. Whichever option you choose, stop spinning your wheels on your own and get a fast track to higher ELO today. Now let's get back on topic, shall we? Starting things out with the top lane, our first pick is Olaf. At one point, not even that long ago, Olaf was a top laner who could just brute force just about anyone else out of the lane and could snowball that lead to a victory. But now he just falls really flat. You still see a good amount of the early cheese working successfully, but it just doesn't carry you as far as it used to. Previously, it seemed like he was just at least good at split pushing, and with the old broken gore drinker, he could be pretty impactful in fights. But now with Divine Center being so OP, he just falls off a lot faster against any lane opponents that build it. And with Gordringer being nerfed pretty hard compared to its early season version, when he comes into the team fights, he isn't nearly the lifesteal tank that he once was. Jungle Olaf is able to work, at least situationally, because once ahead, he can force objectives and just keep the snowball rolling. In the top lane, Olaf is just too isolated from the rest of the map to use any early lead that he does get, and by the time it's time for the top laners to group, he's just too easy to deal with. Our other top laner that you may want to avoid is Ryze. Despite being a ranged champion, he can't really leverage that advantage against his opponents. It's not like his autos do that much damage, he's just too man hungry to spam for harass, and he has no way of escaping opponents that jump in on him. I mean, he does have a root, but what are you gonna do? Sit back every time it's on cooldown and give up some farm? He's pretty weak in general, even as a mid laner, but there's one thing that specifically hurts top lane rise. Whether you're trading with it or just farming, his E does constant splash damage the whole wave. This can lead to an unavoidable slow push to the enemy side of the wave, and leaves you very, very open to being ganked by the jungler. Once behind, Ryze is basically free food, and I'm not talking about you because you guys are looking like a snack today. Like any other mage, he's just incredibly squishy, and being that you don't have any damage early game to fight back, you're just helpless. Traditionally, Ryze has been considered more of a hyperscaling mage, with super hard hitting combos on relatively short cooldowns. But look at the other champions in the meta. Even if you reach 3 or 4 items with Ryze, there's no chance that you're signing up to a Camille or a Riven in the side lane. The only argument they can really make for Ryze is that he has a good gank setup, so he works super well with aggressive junglers. But there are other champions that do that better. Take Maokai for example. He also has a point and click root and also has a knockback and a slow to make the kill easier to secure. You may argue that Ryze is a carry, but I'd counter that by saying Maokai can honestly carry with the lead as well, if not better, since he doesn't need that much time to come online, can 1v1 most bruisers if he itemizes for it, and he has the benefit of providing a front line in team fights. Now looking at the jungle, our first pick to talk about is Twitch. When it comes to feast or famine, 
Twitch is the most extreme example. Speaking of Twitch, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash Nathan underscore ING. I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 6 to 8 p.m. PST. <laughs> yeah, and kind of like Twitch, I will also end a lot. Twitch may be a hyper carry, but in the jungle, you can't really farm. His clear speed sucks, and he doesn't really have sustain, hence the reliance on getting an early, cheesy kill. Most players at this point know exactly what Twitch does, so they respect his early ganks. And if this happens, he quickly falls more and more behind in levels. That alone is bad enough, but then you have to consider the meta champions. Kha'Zix, Lee Sin, Shin Zhao, the newly buffed Jarvan. If these champions see you, you're basically guaranteed to be dead. I know it can be tempting to try and replicate what the high elo one tricks do, but the thing is, they have it down to an exact science. They also do it with a Yumi or a Lulu. That along with the fact that it's usually a challenger player playing on a smurf makes it look a lot easier than it really is. Do your team and yourself a favor, don't, don't make this work. Our other stay away from this pick is Rengar. Like Twitch, he's very feast for famine. And in the current meta, he has a bad matchup against just about any meta pick. He can't really duel any other champions that you commonly see in the jungle, and he lacks any real escape, so once he's caught out, he's basically dead. And it's not like he can make it up with ganks. Rengar's early ganks are some of the worst in the game, and even with his ultimate, they aren't very successful. And he's definitely not a champion that has scaling on his side. He needs to snowball early so he can just one-shot carries in fights. But again, his super weak early game means that you're basically never going to be able to get the foot in the door. Until there's a major meta shift in the jungle, or he sees some huge buffs, he's going to remain bottom tier for this role. Though I say Rengar top is doing super well, as his hit and run playstyle works really really well in this role. And you can actually even bully the strongest laners if you know how to combo well. So if you have an itch to play him, take him up there. And also if you have no self-respect and play top lane for fun. Rengar is one of the many champions that I think is almost impossible for Riot to balance. Even when his win rate is positive, he's still a Feast for Famine champion. The positive win rate means that he's more likely to be on the Feast side of the spectrum. When Rengar is viable, it basically means that he has the potential to snowball wildly out of control. And I've gotta say, even if he's not viable, I still don't want to go against him. Anyway, if you try to nerf him from that point, he just ends up getting gutted. Which is ironic, because that's kind of what he does. It seems like he's never in a sweet spot. Anyway, that brings us to today's question of the day. What champion do you find unhealthy and impossible to balance? Let us know your answers down in the comments below. Now, without further ado, let's get back on with the video. Next up, for the mid lane, we'll be starting off with Lucian. In a bubble, Lucian isn't a completely awful mid laner. When played perfectly, he can be a real pain to deal with, able to bully just about anybody out in the early game. But there are just too many chinks in his armor to make it worth picking him. For one, being super aggressive in lane involves dashing in and trading heavily on the wave. This always leaves you to jungle ganks, and is especially an issue in the current meta, where most junglers are trying to gank early. Lucian's early game strength means that you win most 2v2s if your jungler is playing around you. But we know how solo queue is. Junglers aren't always going to cooperate. And it's almost a bit ridiculous to expect them to AFK in your lane and babysit you when you have camps to clear and other lanes to visit. Jungle influence aside, there's also the mid meta that you have to worry about. You may bully them hard early. But even a 20 or 30 CS gap quickly loses its value when somebody like Talon or Zed just hits 6 and can just one-shot you with their combo. Whether it's a result of a jungle gank or your opponent getting the better of you, it just takes one death to pretty much be useless the entire rest of the game. Our other mid laner to avoid is Nunu. <laughs> this one is almost put in this list specifically for my friend who's griefing everybody in Diamond and Masters. Stop doing it! Nunu used to be really OP, albeit a cheesy pick that emerged last season, but it's really fallen off. The buff he's getting this patch is pretty good for him in the jungle, but we feel the need to include his role as a mid laner on this list to dissuade those of you who may think that he's actually making his return to the mid lane. Yeah, the movement speed will be better off for his roams, and the higher AP ratio means his E does more damage, but those aren't why Nunu mid is bad. For one, people just got used to how Nunu mid works. Just like Twitch earlier on this list, his extremely single-minded playstyle makes it pretty difficult for you to get into the game if people know how to look for your roams. But the second and the more damaging reason is that Nunu really can't manhandle the laning phase like he used to be able to. The meta back then was mostly champions that relied with doing their damage over time, so you could easily W the wave, use your E to clean up what didn't die to the snowball, and Q to sustain any poke damage done to you. When the wave shoved out, you then look for a roam. But the current roster of meta mid laners can punish you extremely hard when you go to push the wave by just going for an all in after you roll in with your snowball. Mid Nunu only really worked because you could cheese your way out to an early lead. But with that not really being viable anymore, it just doesn't really work. Like previous picks, there may be one tricks out there that really do make it work, but that's because they have it down to an exact science. And you're better off not attempting to do it just because they can. Moving things down to the bot lane, our ADC to avoid this patch is Senna. Okay, let me start off by saying that Senna herself is a pretty good champion, but she's just way, way better when you play her as a support. Her souls give a pretty nice chunk of gold themselves, and on top of that, since you're going to be getting more souls as a support, you're getting a lot more stats from her passive, with the most important being the bonus range. 
Even if you have the items, the lower range on ADC Senna makes it much more difficult to safely put out damage in teamfights. Being support also means that you're leaving the gold to a champion where the more income actually does make them more useful. When it comes to who Senna lanes with, the very best champions are generally tanky, melee ones that can go ahead and stand between her and your lane opponents. But Senna also does well with almost most ADCs, as long as they trade with her. On the flip side of the coin, she pairs really poorly with enchanters and champions like Zillion, and given that those who are super popular, strong supports, it's yet another reason why she fails as an ADC. Personally, I'm happy this is the case. I like Senna as a support, and I strongly dislike when she's played as an ADC, so I think Riot hit the nail on the head with balancing her out just by the last set of the changes that they did to her. But that's just how I feel. Let us know how you guys feel in the comments down below on which role Senna is meant to be played. For our supports, the first one that we have is Pantheon. I get the appeal of Pantheon as a kill lane support. He has point and click CC, and he can do a good amount of burst damage. He makes him practically immune to enemy trades, he's super easy to use, and you can snowball the lane hard if you're able to pick up the early kills. But after that, Pantheon just doesn't really offer anything utility-wise outside of the laning phase. I mean, I guess that his ultimate is some sort of engage, but come on, let's not grasp at straws. Though if you do, make sure it's a boba straw. <laughs> or maybe just grab that straw and maybe tell me to suck it up, I don't know. It just results in a single target stun, and with him being on a support budget, if you don't really snowball insanely hard in the lane, it's not like you're gonna have the damage to assassinate the target that you jump on. There are just better options to fill this role. Take Maokai for example, this guy out here stealing everybody's roles. He also has a point and click CC, and he has more of it. And he also offers a lot of lane control with his saplings. And outside of the lane, those same saplings are great little mine or ward hybrids that take control of the jungle a lot easier. Even with his E being nerfed this patch, Maokai is a better alternative if you want an all-in, more carryish playstyle as a support. Then there are standard engaged tanky supports like Rel and Leona. They may not do nearly as much damage, but they offer a slew of CC, including actual engage for teamfights. Finishing off our list, we have Malphite. Kind of like Pantheon and many other unsuccessful champions in general, Malphite is just too much of a one-trick pony. But apparently, that's not enough to stop nearly one-fifth of the Malphite players that try to make him work in this role. He's essentially useless in lane pre-6. All he can really provide is Q-Poke, but moving up to be in range of that means that you're most likely going to be taking some pretty big damage from your lane opponents. Once 6 hits, his ultimate can easily lead to a kill, but only if the opponent doesn't flash it. If they do, well, I guess they're also probably gods, but you're also gonna die. Even if you get the kill, he's useless again until his ultimate is back up. I don't think playing for a single ability on such a long cooldown is really worth the massive downtime and its usefulness that comes with the champion. Another issue is itemization. Top lane Malphite can be a huge nuisance to deal with because it takes ages to bring him down in fights. But as a support, you don't really have the money to be tanky in the later fights. As a result, you have to be glass cannon full AP, but that also means that you're super vulnerable. Being hit by any sort of CC usually means that you're blown up before it even wears off. The only argument that you can make for him is that his ultimate is a great tool for the mid to late game team fights, where you do have CDR for it to be up every single time both teams are ready for a fight, but that just really doesn't outweigh how useless he is for the rest of the game. You don't have to pick some edgy off meta support. And speaking of edgy, that new skin, really really cool. Anyway, you could do the same thing more consistently with somebody like Leona, Rel, or Nautilus. And that wraps up things for the Wars 10 Champions on patch 11.16. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure you sub so you never miss out on our meta guys, and you're always in the loop on what the best picks or the worst picks are. Remember, let us know what champions you find the most unhealthy down in the comments below. And one last thing, don't forget to check out our Discord in the description as well, where you can discuss League further or just hang out and be a part of the community. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.